Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to Aussie Fish Keeping. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the best fish that you can keep in a small aquarium. So I've put together a list of seven fish that I think are the best fish for a small setup. And I've tried to put in mainly exotic fish. So I've kept out stuff like guppies and swordtails. Just because there is a lot of videos with those in it out there. And I wanted to make something a little bit different for you guys. But yeah, without any further ado, let's jump straight into today's video. Okay, so as for our first fish on today's list, we have one that's a little bit rare here in Australia, but nonetheless, it is a great small aquarium fish. And these are half beaks. So I actually didn't know half beaks existed until a couple of months ago, and they are a super awesome little fish. So they are a top dwelling fish, and they do look a lot like a garfish which is actually why sometimes they are referred to as half-beak gars, although their technical and proper name are wrestling half-beaks. So a really cool thing about these guys is that they are actually live bearers, so that obviously means they give birth to live young, and I haven't actually bred them, but I assume that makes them quite easy to breed as well. But yeah, they are plant safe, and they are great in a lot of different setups, as long as it's around 15 to 20 liters and up, they should do perfectly fine. So the only thing with these guys is that you are gonna wanna keep them with things that aren't gonna nip at them, just because they are very top dwelling, so they just stick to the top of the water, a lot like a butterfly fish or a golden panchax. They just sit at the top of the water the whole time, so you're not gonna want anything coming under and nipping at their bottom fins, of course. And I'm sure for these guys, they would love if you put some floating plants in there that they can hide up in the roots, or even some lilies or something like that, just to give them a little bit of structure to hide in at the top of your aquarium. But yeah, if you are looking for a great little interesting nano fish, I would definitely recommend half beaks. Okay, so moving on to another great small aquarium fish. We have one that's just starting to become really popular here in Australia. We have Madaka. So Madaka are actually a really common outdoor pond sort of fish, although a lot of people don't know that they do make great nano fish for any small aquarium. Here in Australia, you can't get too many different strains, although it is becoming more and more popular. So you can start to get your hands on some more interesting ones. But the most popular ones here in Australia are the Platinum Madaka, Black Madaka, and Blue Madaka. There is also a very similar species called a Daisy's Rice Fish, although they aren't actually technically related to Madaka, but they are also a great little minnow fish. As for Madaka, they do actually tend to spend their time in the top water column of your aquarium, so they're not like top dwelling like the half beaks that only stick to the top of the water. They do come down into the middle and bottom of the water. So these guys are also plant safe, as are most of the fish on this list, and they can be kept with quite a few different fish. As long as there's nothing that's going to really bully them or nip at them too much, they don't really nip at things themselves. But yeah, as long as they don't get bullied, they should do perfectly fine in your aquarium. And another great thing about these guys is that they are a super hardy fish and they don't need any sort of heating in their tank. They do actually prefer a little bit of flow, but you can keep them in a still pond or still body of water. And yeah, they just want pretty decent water parameters, obviously, just like any sort of tropical fish would. But yeah, as long as all that stuff's relatively stable, you should find that these are also a great addition to any small aquarium. Moving on to the next fish that would be perfect in a small setup is bumblebee gobies. So a lot of people actually don't get these guys because they think they are going to be hard to feed, but that's just simply false. They do eat quite a variety of different foods. So while they're small, stuff like baby brine shrimp or frozen baby brine shrimp or even just ground up flake food or just dry food in general is a great food for them. And they will eat a lot quite easily once they settle into your tank a little bit. And then once they get a little bit bigger, you can actually start giving them live black worms and bigger sized foods like that just to get them really healthy and looking good in your aquarium. So being a tropical fish, these guys do actually prefer a heated aquarium, although I'm sure they do all right if the temperature doesn't go too low in your tank. And these guys are actually pretty easy to breed, believe it or not. So you can breed them in stuff like empty seashells or small PVC pipes. 
or if you get a really nice heavily planted tank, I'm sure they'd breed in there in up amongst the plants. Which brings me on to my next point, these guys are obviously also plant safe and they do actually like having a lot of plants in their aquarium for them to hide in. Just because they are quite a small fish, obviously in the wild, they would be preyed upon quite a bit. So it just makes them feel a little bit more safe if you have some nice lush aquarium plants in there for them. As for tanks mates with these guys, they can go with pretty much anything that won't eat them. So being, like I said before, a really small fish, there is quite a few things that would try and eat them and very well could eat them. So fish I would recommend is stuff like tetras, guppies, just a really common small tropical fish. And I probably wouldn't put them with any sort of cichlid whatsoever. But yeah, with that being said, they are a great addition if you're looking for a really awesome and unique aquarium fish for your small setup. Okay, so as for the next fish on our list, we have coolie loaches. So coolie loaches are a really interesting and unique aquarium fish. They almost look like a small eel. Although, obviously, as the name suggests, they are a loach and they're more closely related to things like Pakistani and dwarf chain loaches. So, there is a few different variants you can get of these guys. I think there's a golden whip coolie loach and then there's a black coolie loach and striped coolie loaches. My personal favourite are the striped coolie loaches and I think they are the smallest out of the three. I think the golden whip coolie loaches get a little bit bigger than the other two although they do all stay relatively small in comparison to other fish. So the only thing with these guys is that they do hide quite a lot and if you have them in a very heavily planted tank, you'll probably most likely never see them. You'll just put them in there one day and probably never see them again. Although they are nocturnal, so they do come out at night time. So if you are around your tank at night, you will probably see them then. Another thing about these guys is that they can fit into really tight spaces so putting stuff in there like PVC pipes and little ornaments and stuff that have little nooks and crannies for them to hide in is really beneficial for them. But you do have to be really careful with filtration with these guys so if you do have a filter with an intake inside of the fish tank you will need to make sure there's a guard on it just because these guys can get sucked up so easily by the filters. Or you can obviously use a filter like a sponge filter, which would minimize that risk completely. But yeah, I would definitely recommend coolie loaches for anybody looking for a small fish. Moving on to our next fish on the list, we have probably one of my favorite species of fish, grammies. Now, in particular, I'm talking about the more dwarf variants. So things like better fish, licorice grammies, sparkling grammies, samurai grammies, honey grammies, uh, chocolate grammies. So all of these smaller species are great additions to any small aquarium and my personal favourites are obviously the licorice grammies and bedders. In particular I really love the wild type bedders so actually I have a few different species of wild type bedders myself and I think they are a really great fish for anybody to get. All grammies are very peaceful and super easy to keep as long as you give them a high protein diet and keep them in a heated aquarium you should have no troubles with them whatsoever the only ones to look out for of course are the better fish obviously you can't really keep two male better fish together obviously there is some betters with really peaceful temperaments which can go together although most of the time male betters will fight but female betters can be kept in a sorority of around four to five and you should find no aggression within them and then all the other Grammys should be fine, no matter what, whether they're female or male, they should all cohabitate quite well in a aquarium. So Grammys I would steer clear from are obviously giant Grammys and kissing Grammys and also the opal and gold Grammys. So these species can get obviously quite big and they can outgrow a small aquarium quite quickly. Also, these larger Grammy variants can be a little bit more aggressive in comparison to the smaller variants. But yeah, they are definitely a great option for a small fish for any smaller setup. And then moving on to our second last fish on the list, we have an Australian native that not really many people keep, but we have blue eyes. So you can actually get quite a wide variety of blue eyes, obviously the most common being the Pacific blue eyes, but you can also get quite a variety of really nice blue eyes, like golden blue eyes, spotted blue eyes, neon blue eyes, and the list goes on. There is 
seriously so many species out there and they are a great Australian native fish. So blue eyes in general are a very peaceful fish and they do look so nice if you keep them in a group with more females just because the males will flare off more and show more of their color. So I would recommend a ratio of around two males to three or four females. But no matter what, they will be peaceful with each other. You just may find your males aren't showing off as much as you want them to. But yeah, these guys are obviously an Australian native, like I said before. So they can deal with the Australian rainwater here. And they can also deal quite well with conditioned tap water. Obviously, if you live near where they're found, you can probably keep them without any heater. Although if you live in colder regions of Australia, you may want to put a heater in their aquarium. So these guys are actually also very easy to breed and quite fun to breed. You just pop a spawning mop in there and then check that about once every two days and pick off the eggs and just repeat that process till you gather up a bunch of eggs and you can raise the fry. So these guys also love a planted aquarium and they do really well in a planted aquarium with Australian natives like Valicinaria and all sorts of Australian native plants. Sometimes if you do have big luscious plants, you will find that they can lay in there and you might find fry swimming around your aquarium. But yeah, they are definitely an awesome small aquarium fish and I would recommend them to anyone. As for this final spot on our list, we have a super unique species. We have killifish. So killifish are a really peaceful nano species and you can actually get quite a range of different patterns and colors. My favorite being the Austral Orange, I think they are a super nice species, although obviously there are a wide variety out there. Probably the most common nowadays being the Clown Killifish, also known as the Rocket Killifish, I believe. They are a super nice species, they have a really nice red flame tail and obviously a stripy pattern. But besides these guys, there are obviously a lot of others and there's actually been quite a few rare ones more commonly becoming available in Australia. And I've yet to get my hands on some, but I definitely want to. So these guys do great in a planted aquarium and they actually prefer smaller aquariums. So if you keep them in a larger aquarium, they can tend to freak out a little bit and become very stressed. Although they do like it a lot better in a small, heavily planted aquarium. And you'll find if you do keep them in an aquarium like this, they will show off their colors a lot more. So these guys are best kept in a pair just because the male will color up obviously a lot more if it has a female to flare off to. But yeah, they are a very peaceful fish and you can actually keep them with a lot of different species of tetras, guppies, all sorts of really common aquarium fish. Obviously things that aren't too aggressive that are going to attack the killifish. But yeah, the killifish is definitely a species that I would highly recommend to anybody whatsoever looking for a fish for a smaller setup that's easy to care for, colourful, and just a super interesting fish all round. But with that being said, that is going to bring us to the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed and I hope I helped you find a new little fish for your small setup. Please make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and make sure to comment down below your thoughts on the video. I love going through all the comments and replying to you guys. But yeah, with that being said, I'll see you all in that next one.